Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby. I don't know why I'm crouching and why I chose this angle, but we're rolling with it. And today I'm going to be starting a new reading vlog. I'm literally picking up right where my last reading vlog ended. And I'm going to be starting a reading vlog for Goblin by Josh Mallerman because this is a horror novel that I've been very interested in reading recently because it's six novellas in this one huge story. It's kind of thick, isn't it? Okay, it's not that bad. It's like less than 400 pages, so we're good. But I'm gonna be reading this in this book. I also thought it might be fun to read this other book that I've been seeing hyped so much lately on booktube. It's this book called Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. The cover is truly disturbing, like that shit could give me nightmares. But this is one that I saw, like so many of my friends were reading this book during Summerween and ever since I've been like extremely interested in it and it's also very short, it's another novella. And so I guess this vlog is just going to be me, me reading some really highly anticipated hyped short horror novels. I mean, this one is six short stories within the one novel, so yeah. I also wanted to mention that I might be listening to Dream Girl on audio this week, so I know this one's a thriller. I think it'll be a fun time. Let's jump into Goblin. I'm so excited. Woo! Oh my god, I almost hit Tank. <laughs> the last reading vlog that I just did was all reading romance, and as much as I love reading romance, my heart needs the horror books. It just needs... I want to be scared! o'clock in the afternoon now but I finished the prologue and I finished the first short story and I thought the prologue was so well done. I thought the prologue was very creepy. If you didn't know anything about this book it's all taking place in this town called Goblin and Goblin is essentially this like really small spooky town. It's very much like Dairy Maine, kind of like Stephen King vibes. But all of the short stories in this novel kind of give you a glimpse into this town and make you, they're like stories of different spooky things that have happened in this town. And the prologue was really cool because we were just following this guy who's like a delivery truck driver and he gets this mysterious package that he's supposed to take to Goblin. And it's, the prologue is literally only like 20 pages. So it's a really, really short little thing that happens and it's just a really it was a really great way to start the book like I thought it was so genuinely creepy and I was so intrigued by what was happening and that's not even included in the six short story so I thought that was like a nice cool added thing um I just finished the first story which is called a man in slices and without giving you any spoilers the description for the short story because he includes a bunch of little descriptions for each of the short stories but it says a man proves his legendary love to his girlfriend with a sacrifice even more daring than Vincent Van Gogh's and sends her more than his heart. The short story was very strange. It was definitely creepy, but it wasn't very like scary. Like the prologue was genuinely like creeping me out. Like it was so scary, but this one was more strange and kind of creepy and weird, but I didn't hate it. Like, I don't know, I thought it was fine. It was only about like a 50 page long story. So now I'm on page. 71 and I don't know the next short story is actually pretty small as well So I'm excited to read more of these. I feel like Josh Mallerman really thrives in the short story format, which is something I've mentioned before in my videos because one of his books, A House at the Bottom of a Lake, is a short story that he's written and it's one of my favorite books of all time. Anyways, I am setting this aside for now because I am currently getting ready to go and meet my parents for dinner, which is why I've changed, you know, a little bit, freshened up a throwback. <laughs> Look at this look. Oh. <laughs> look. Like. Look at that cute little sign right there. Bam. Look who it is. Whoa. <laughs> is this place cute? It's uh, weird. Never been before. <laughs> It's 
some watermelon dinghy. <laughs> They're good dinghy. Mmm. It's just past 11.30 at night right now. I have not read anything. I had a lovely dinner with my parents and then when I got home, I ended up getting a blizzard from Dairy Queen and then we watched Big Brother and then I started to edit the last vlog that I just finished up. But I wanted to let you know I have started listening to the audiobook for True Story. I can't remember if I mentioned this one earlier or not. I think I said I was going to start Dream Girl, but I barely started Dream Girl and I just decided I wanted to start this one instead because this one's been on my radar for quite some time and I'm a hundred pages into it. I've been following along in the audiobook and I don't know how I feel about this so far. I feel like it's written in a very, very strange way. And on audio, it's even more strange because it's really hard to follow because we're changing narrators constantly. Like there's a male narrator and then there's a female narrator. And then I think there's a third or like another female narrator. But it's confusing because part of the female narration is this one girl is like submitting essays to her college professor, I'm assuming. And it's weird because we'll hear her essay that she submits, but then we'll hear the essay a second time with the professor's like commentary on what she's saying. So it'll just like break up the audio from the first letter and you'll like hear the professor's commentary, but it just makes it so confusing because I'm like, didn't I just listen to this? Because it's repeating the same exact thing that she just submitted, but with comments in it. I just don't know if I care too much, to be honest, because it seems like it's all revolving around this really sad and intense sexual assault case that happened like in the past. And I don't know, I think the story is, it's just kind of boring the way that it's written. I'm just not very interested and I don't really love the writing style. It's also like huge chunks of chapters. It's not really like, there is no chapters really, it's just parts. So like the first part of the book is like 50 pages and then the next part of the book is like, 70 pages or something like it's just really long chunks. I might DNF this. I don't know. We'll see but um for now I think I'm gonna try to read one more story from Goblin tonight. Maybe another one. It depends on how how short it is like three o'clock. I didn't really update you this morning because I was awake until like almost three in the morning last night watching TikTok and I didn't read anything last night. I said I would and I didn't and you know like the TikTok rabbit hole like once you open the app you're done, you're doomed, your whole night is gone. And then this morning because I was up until three o'clock last night I slept in so late until like 11, like 11 15 this morning. And so when I woke up, I just decided to go to Barnes & Noble because I needed to get the Taking of Jake Livingston because that's my August book club pick. And so I got that. I went out. I was listening to the audiobook for Dream Girl pretty much all morning. I'm 13% of the way through this audiobook right now, so it still feels like I'm barely in it. But like, I already want to DNF it. Like, it's so boring. I don't even care. I don't even know what's happening. I don't even care. And I'm like, oh my god, like two books back to back that I'm listening to on audio that I have the urge to want to DNF. Like, I'm so like, ugh, like, am I getting into a reading slump? Like, what is going on? And then while I was eating my breakfast this morning, I did read another story from Goblin. I read the story called Camp but that's camp with a K. And it's just about this man who's like living in his apartment or whatever. And he's just really terrified of everything. He's like really paranoid that there's either a ghost in his apartment or there's somebody in his apartment. And literally the entire short story is just about him being really paranoid. And it was so boring. Like I'm considering giving that short story one star. Like I really didn't like it. Ugh. <laughs> now I'm like, do I want to DNF this too? Because the first short story was like fine. It was probably like a two or three star for me. And then the second one was probably like a one star. And it's like, I know they're short stories. So like they could easily be better and they can easily surprise me. So it's like, maybe I should just try a little bit of each short story, but not be afraid to DNF the short stories if I don't like them. But I did check on Goodreads and this has like a 3.5 something average, which is like not great. You know, it's pretty low. I don't know, I'm not DNFing three books like back to back to back like that would just make for like the worst fucking vlog ever. I think what I'm gonna do for now is I'm going to read one more short story from this. I'm gonna read the next one which is Happy Birthday Hunter 
and hopefully it's good and if it's not good i think i'm gonna take a break from goblin and try to read the other horror short story that i said i wanted to read on my phone i am not into goblin this sucks night at five o'clock i'm so excited i'm gonna be meeting one of my friends liz over at one of our local restaurants and i'm so excited because i haven't seen this girl in over a year because of the panorama we're currently in and i'm just so excited to see her it's been a while yeah until i leave i'm going to be reading goblin and hopefully this next short story i swear to god it better be great hello it is pretty late at night now i know it looks like i never leave my room but i swear that i do <laughs> i just forgot my camera but i did have a really lovely dinner tonight with my friend liz and it was just so nice because i haven't seen her in like literally forever so it was really great to catch up and yeah now it's 11 40 and i finally i just finished reading the other short story like i've been so distracted I don't know what's going on but like tiktok is like literally distracting my brain like i cannot even concentrate so i just now finished the other short story that i was reading it's the third one the happy birthday hunter and that one was definitely better than the second short story but it was still just kind of like fine like there's just nothing about this book so far that is really like amazing for me so that's been really frustrating and i feel like this book is literally about to put me in a reading slump if i try to continue so i think i'm gonna set this aside for now i don't know if it's like a permanent dnf but as of right now it's a dnf um and i thought maybe tonight would be a good night to read the other book that i wanted to read for this the book things have gotten worse since we last spoke because i downloaded it as an ebook and it's only like 115 pages as an ebook so i'm like okay that's like incredibly short like i could probably bust this whole thing out in one sitting hopefully like seriously if i don't end up liking this book either i'm probably just gonna like give up on reading for the rest of july <laughs> okay hi it's the next morning last night i read the entirety of things have gotten worse since we last spoke and like bitch what the fuck what the fuck did i just read i jumped into this book knowing absolutely nothing like i didn't even read the general premise i had just heard this book being talked about on the interwebs people were discussing saying it was very unique and very different and so i jumped in knowing absolutely nothing and like what in the world but like in a good way like what the f like what i think because this book is a novella if you have any interest in reading this i would recommend jumping in knowing absolutely nothing but i will warn you that i think this is one of the weirdest books that i've ever read and it was very disturbing because i mean there are some gruesome gruesome trigger warnings for things like animal abuse and like abuse of a baby like a fetus it's really disturbing and gross and disgusting <laughs> Like, some of the scenes in this book had me like, <sighs> like, even just imagining it right now, I'm like, that is so disgusting. Like, no, why? So I will warn you, um, if you're kind of like more on the faint of heart side, if you don't like do well with some horror disgusting like situations, then I don't know if this will be for you, but whoa. So the general premise of this book is really interesting because this entire book is actually told through inst instant messages and email and it takes place in the year 2000 and we're following these two women who are just going back and forth with emails it all starts with this one girl wanting to sell this product online and then they're like start emailing each other about the product and the story just kind of takes off from there and oh my gosh this book was just wild and i mean like i said it's literally one of the weirdest books that i've ever read as soon as i finished it i wasn't sure how i felt about it initially because i was just shocked that it ended right where it did it felt like i could have continued to read another 100 pages of this story like i feel like i needed more just because i was already so invested in like what the fuck was happening but also like now like looking back on it now that i've had a few hours to reflect i feel like i really respect that like, and i feel like the more that i think about it and the more that i reflect on the book the higher of a rating that i want to give it but i do feel like it's going to be probably like a four star for me at least right now i might think more on this in the future and want to give it a five star just because my mind is so blown like this is like definitely one of the most unique horror books that i've ever read i just don't know i mean like my friend mikay um was saying when he read this book for summerween he was saying how this book is a real look at you know loneliness and how like when you're really lonely it's like scary to think what you would or could do for another person and i also didn't realize that this book was going to be queer like i didn't realize it was going to be this like thing between two women so that was also kind of a lovely surprise 
So yeah, wow, I am amazed. That definitely just pulled me right out of my reading slump because that was absolutely fascinating and terrifying and weird. Oh yes. So I was trying to figure out what book to read next because I wasn't really sure. I was feeling a little slumpy still. Um, and I was looking through some of the new releases and I realized The Good Lie by A.R. Torre just came out pretty recently. And I had my eye on this one because my friend Matt gave it five stars and he like really, really loved it. So I was like wanting to check this book out when it comes out. And so I ended up downloading the ebook because I just read the first chapter to see if it would be something I'd be interested in and it was. And so I downloaded the rest of the ebook and I'm now 30% of the way through the ebook. I got about 100 pages in. And oh my God, this book is so interesting so far. We're just following this woman who's like this psy psychiatrist or psychologist, I don't really know. But she's been helping this man who he's been kind of saying like he's been wanting to like kill his wife and stuff and she didn't know if that was like legit like what he planned to do but he's been saying it for like a long time and then she randomly gets this phone call that him and the wife have died but they think it happened under like not suspicious circumstances and now she's like afraid for her job but then also while this is happening simultaneously in alternate chapters we're getting the point of view of this mother who found out that her son was alive because there's been this like serial killer that's going around their town and he hunts for like teenage boys and there's been six teenage boys who have gone missing and who have died in these like brutally gruesome ways and her son was the seventh victim that was taken and kidnapped and he's been missing for like 40 days or something and then he returns home and he tells her that it was his science teacher at the high school who was like kidnapping him and so they think that it was that guy that did all of the kidnapping of all the boys and now at the start of this book they're starting the process of trying to you know put this guy in jail and they're thinking maybe he didn't do it and maybe he was set up to make you think that he was the killer of all of these boys none of that is all and none of that is spoilers by the way that's all like the general premise of the book but so far it's like so interesting so i'm really enjoying this which i'm very excited about because i was kind of nervous because i've previously given an ar tory book like one star it was that book the ghost writer like ugh that book was garbage but uh <laughs> but this book is really good so far so i'm excited about it but right now it's a friday night i'm on the way to work i'm uh, the closing manager tonight on the way to work we got that new creepy caffeine to listen to let's go <laughs> next morning i mean it's actually like 11 45 now um but last night i barely ended up reading anything i only read like another 40 pages of the ebook but i'm still really enjoying it it's not because i'm not enjoying it it's because i literally came home ate food filmed an asmr video and then i was so tired i almost fell asleep so i only read about 40 pages and then this morning i woke up at like nine and i was going to go to the gym first thing this morning but then i woke up and my stomach was just kind of like sour now i just ordered starbucks which i know you're like you just ordered starbucks and you're not feeling that great but you know what starbucks makes me happy i also ordered a chai latte which i'm excited about because i haven't had a chai latte in probably like over a year starbucks has been acquired i really love getting their classic oatmeal if you've never tried it it freaking slaps i also get a bagel they kind of like toasted the hell out of my bagel though but it's fine but also, I got the chai. It's been over a year since I last had chai, so I honestly barely remember what it tastes like. So I'm excited. Oh my god, yum. It tastes like fall to me. It is such an interesting read, and it's definitely like a unique read to me. And I'm always looking for books that have like weird, strange elements to them. Damn, look at what came in the mail today. All's Well by Mona Awad. Ugh. Simon & Schuster was so kind enough to send me this, and like... How am I supposed to concentrate on the book that I'm reading with this book sitting there staring at me? Okay, hi, it's like 4.30 in the afternoon right now and I'm almost done with the book. I only have about 50 pages left, but I wanted to show you because I just got back from going to Home Goods and Target because I was feeling kind of like down this morning. I don't know why, so nothing makes me feel better than retail therapy. The main reason why I went out is because I wanted to get new pillows 
for our couch because um, Tank absolutely destroyed the old pillows that we had. Like they were falling apart at the seams and they've been driving me kind of crazy. So I wanted to get like one big nice pillow that was like a different color and then like, you know, multiple white pillows and stuff. And I feel like it looks so nice. I mean, I'm no like interior decorator or anything, but I feel like I really like how that teal looks with our couch. But yeah, and I feel so accomplished because I washed all the blankets. So there's no like tank smell on them anymore. And I also got a new candle while I was at Target and I just lit it and it smells so good. I also got these new little coasters at Home Goods. How cute are these? I got, f there's four of them that came in the pack. So I put two on our table and then two on the dining room table. But like, uh, I just feel um, so accomplished right now and just so great. And yeah, I'm just gonna pull up uh, the book and finish reading it. I only have about 50 pages left and I am still really enjoying it. The only thing I will say though is that it's starting to feel kind of slow. Like, I don't know, the story has definitely slowed down in pace for me. And I feel like it's almost like reading from the point of view of a detective. I mean, I know it's not technically because she's a psychologist, but she's getting assigned to this case. And so she's having to study like all of the victims, like all of their case files and talk it over and, you know, go over it with the guy who's the, like d the defense lawyer. And so it kind of feels like you're reading about a detective's point of view just because it's all about the case. <laughs> okay, I just finished reading The Good Lie and i am freaking shook i'm kind of mad at myself that i didn't like predict this because i feel like if i thought about it really hard i could have figured this shit out but there were some good plot twists at the end of this book what the fuck i love too that there was kind of this like underlying romance happening throughout this entire book between this main girl that's like the psychologist and the guy who's like the defense attorney. I just thought they had like really interesting chemistry and I was just kind of like rooting for them throughout the book. So I was definitely picturing Chris Evans in Defending Jacob. I don't know if you've seen that show, but he plays like a defense attorney in that show. And I think he just reminded me a little bit of this character, like his story and what happened to him. It just kind of felt similar to like his character for some reason. So I was picturing Chris Evans and I was not mad about it. And I don't know, I just, I'm surprised. I thought it was great. Like I'm probably gonna end up giving this four stars just because I think around the middle there, I did start to get bored and it started to drag just a tad bit for me. The ending definitely made up for it. And I think this is definitely a thriller worth reading. I've been watching the Olympics and I didn't realize that skateboarding was a part of the Olympics now. Like, isn't this something new? because I don't recall ever watching skateboarding in the Olympics before, but you know, that's cool. Good morning. Um, so it's the next morning and last night I spent most of the night just like watching the Olympics because I freaking love watching the Olympics. Like it's just so much fun to watch. And since it's only on like every four years, I just really enjoy watching it when it's on. So I wasn't reading too much last night, but then right before bed, I was like scrolling through my audiobook wish list at my library just to see if anything was available and I saw that the audiobook for I Let You Go was available so I was just like okay what the heck like I'll just start listening to it because I as much as I wanted to read all as well last night I was just not in the mood to read physically like my eyes were just so tired so I just wanted to listen to something so I got up to page 94 and I'm 25% of the way through the audiobook and so far this book is fine um this book is a thriller novel and I've mainly been wanting to read this book because of Kayla like Books and Lala really loves this book apparently it has has like one of the best plot twists in a thriller so I'm definitely curious about that but all I know so far is it's about this mother who in the very beginning like the freaking first chapter of this book she loses her son in a hit and run like her little boy goes like running into the street and gets hit by a car and dies and so it's kind of like bam so sad right off the start and then in alternate chapters we're following these detectives as they're trying to figure out what like how like why there was a hit and run and like who did this and like whatever so we're kind of going back and forth so far it's fine i mean like the detective point of view chapters are definitely reading more like a thriller than the other mom's chapters are because her chapters are kind of more about her like wanting to try and like restart some of her life and it's almost reading more like a contemporary in her chapters but i don't mind it because like the story is really interesting and i'm already invested kind of so 
Um, so yeah, it's it's good so far. I do work all day today and I work 10.30 to close and I'm the closing manager, so I am not leaving early. <laughs> so that's slightly unfortunate. It's gonna be a very long day for me. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook on the way to work. Hopefully if I do get a break today, I don't know if I will or not, but if I do, then I'll try to listen to more of it on break today. Instant. Rain UV's crossing line, yet they're refusing to acknowledge for months. Hello, it's like seven o'clock at night right now. I didn't film anything while I was on break earlier, but I actually did get an hour break earlier today, and I listened to this audiobook throughout my entire break. So now I'm 184 pages into this book, and there was already a decent plot twist, and I was like, okay, is this the twist that everybody talks about, or is there something else coming? Like, I don't even know. I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I was at the beginning. Like, it's, I, I'm really invested now, and I'm getting really into it. And so um, I just made a quick dinner, and I'm still at work. I'm actually clocked off right now, but one of our shift leaders is training for, like, one of their shifts, and so they need to practice on their own, but I still need to be here because... Uh, I need to like supervise them, you know, to make sure everything goes right. So I'm still gonna be here until close. So I have two hours to kill in here. So I just made a quick little dinner and I'm just gonna continue listening to this audiobook and hopefully I can get a good chunk of this book done like right now, today. finally home after a very long day um i was at work for about 11 hours today i mean i know i wasn't clocked on for the entire time but like it was still a really long day like i was in that building for 11 hours and anyways i just got home at like 9 30 it's now about like 11 15 i have gotten such a good chunk of this book done today i'm literally almost done i'm at around page 308 i'm 85 percent of the way through the audiobook so I only have this little tiny sliver left and I'm so excited because I feel like this book is really picking up in the momentum. Like I feel like for a lot of this book, it was really slow. Like especially the first like 150 pages or so were really slow until we hit part two. There was a really interesting twist right before part two that made me slightly more intrigued in the story. And so I'm just really surprised that I was able, I was able to get through so much of this today. That ending just made me fucking cry. <laughs> cool. <sighs> Not okay. Wow. Hello, good morning. Last night I finished I Let You Go and this is going down as another one of those rare thrillers that have made me cry. I don't know what it was about the ending of this book but this just freaking, this just hit me like so hard at the end right there. And I just got so emotional for some reason. Like I didn't even think I was that invested in these characters until it ended. And then I just like, I felt like I got my heart ripped out. Like, oh my God. I will warn you that this book is a lot darker than you go in anticipating. I mean, I know like in the first chapter of this book, you basically see this child get killed in a hit and run. So like, it doesn't start with like rainbows and butterflies. You know what I mean? Even still the way that this book goes there's a lot of trigger warnings for things like domestic violence abuse and rape and it's not something that is easy to read by any means it's it's a lot and so this book was already kind of like weighing heavy on my heart because of the direction it ended up going in it was just a lot it was really dark and a lot more dark than i was anticipating but also holy shit that twist was pretty good i kept predicting because you know since i knew there was going to be a big twist at the end of this book or like everybody talks about the twist in this book I kept predicting what it would be. I had all these different theories and I was wrong. So, I mean, that's cool. Like, I love a good twist. I didn't see that coming. I didn't predict it. There was like one aspect of the twist that I kind of did predict, but the bigger twist that was like the main twist, if you know what I mean, that one I did not predict. So that was really cool. I don't know what I want to rate this. I feel like it's somewhere between like a four and a 4.5 for me. Like I really, really loved it. Is it going to be one of my top favorite thrillers ever? Like probably not, but it's a super memorable book for me. Even though there was a detective point of view in this book, I actually really enjoyed 
the detective point of view in this book which surprised me but I think it's because it was balanced with this alternating point of view between him and then this other woman like I liked that we were going back and forth because I feel like if it was only told from the detective's point of view I probably wouldn't have liked this book very much but because we got the balance with the other woman like I was really invested in uh, Jenna's point of view in this story I just thought her point of view was the most interesting and it was really good but I also did care about the detective and about what was happening in his personal life like I did care and that surprised me but yeah overall I'm like super impressed by this book I didn't think much of it I do think this is Claire McIntosh's debut novel if I'm correct I mean fact check me because I don't know for sure but I think it is because this one came out in 2014 and her author's note at the end fucking broke my heart like that is devastation right there so yeah wow i guess if you've read any other claire mcintosh books let me know what i should check out next because i actually really did enjoy this and i wasn't sure if i was gonna vibe with her writing or not but i think that i do so yeah i think that just about wraps up this reading vlog i mean i know this reading vlog was pretty chaotic and it was all over the place and i pretty much nearly dnf'd three things at the start of this but then luckily i was able to find some favorite things that is a wrap on this reading vlog let me know if you've read any of the books that i read during this reading vlog and thank you so much for watching and thanks for hanging out and i will see you very soon with another video <laughs> bye